Hello, Night here. Um, as you all, I'm sure, are aware, I've been playing quite a bit recently of Mars Warlogs. Uh, it's a very cool little game. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, but the only problem I've had with it, really, is a problem of context. If you've been watching the series, you might well be aware that the backstory for this game is kind of non-existent. Um, at least in the way that it's portrayed. Uh, most of the backstory exists in journal entries that are kind of thrown all over the place in different categories and they're kind of separate and, and, and disparate and kind of it's difficult to build a, a complete picture of what the backstory this is. So what I thought I would do is just in a, a short video just do sort of a, a bit of a primer. Uh, a summary of the backstory of the world in which Mars Warlogs takes place. So I've written a, a short primer and that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to have a quick look at it and uh, hopefully give ourselves a little context. An unspecified amount of time in the indeterminate future Mars was terraformed and colonized by man. The atmosphere was made breathable, sources of liquid water were located, and plant and animal life was transplanted to sites protected from the harsh solar radiation that blanketed most of the surface. After nearly 70 years of growth, the entire solar system was struck by a catastrophic event called simply the turmoil. Mars was thrown off of its axis, disrupting communications with Earth and devastating the fledgling colonies. Some survivors fled the ruined cities, only to become horribly mutated by the surface radiation. Their offspring, disfigured and maligned, became the dust. A segment of society treated like beasts of burden, forced into backbreaking labor and crammed into slums. Those unaffected by radiation quickly formed into water distribution companies in an attempt to provide the scarce liquid resource to the populace. With the connection to Earth severed and water becoming increasingly scarce, the water distribution companies became exceedingly powerful. Abundance, one of the oldest and most powerful companies, began with the mandate of providing water to all colonists after the turmoil. Over time, however, the leaders of the corporation realized the immense power their company wielded, and this understanding slowly transformed them from a politically neutral, quasi-charitable organization into a heavily militarized, tyrannical dictatorship, waging a near-perpetual war with other smaller water corporations over the precious resource. Aurora, the youngest of the four major water companies, was formed with the goal of locating new water sources, avoiding the conflict brewing between the other corporations. After some initial success, the risk involved in scouring the irradiated surface for new sources became too high and the organization was forced into entering the war over the established sources. Each citizen of Aurora is given a virtue name, a descriptive name in the hopes that it will match or possibly reinforce their personality. Although smaller than their monolithic opponent abundance, Aurora has proved a formidable force, thanks in large part to the vast number of technomancers they employ. Individuals trained in the use of pre-turmoil technology, technomancers are capable of harnessing and amplifying the electricity produced by the human body and unleashing it as a devastating weapon. It has been nearly 200 years since the first colonization of Mars, and still the bloody war for water rages across its rusty surface. These are the Mars War Logs. Also, Sheldon almost got raped by a big, fat, ugly guy in the sand showers. That, uh, that happened too. <laughs> 